After the six or so year time jump from episode seven, Damon's baby making hot streak continues. After all his relationship struggles in the past, his two daughters with Lena Valerian are all grown up now. But he has two new babies with Rhaenyra after their secret marriage, and one on the way. Her pregnancy wasn't explicitly stated in episode 8, but all that belly holding and oversized robes gave it away. Even though this episode was like 10 minutes longer than the format HBO has made us accustomed to, the new blondies only got like 20 seconds of camera time. Rhaenyra and Daemon introduced their true-born children to the King Viserys, while he laid there half delirious from all the painkillers shoved down his throat. Can you blame him for being high 24-7? The man's body has been falling apart for the past 20 years, very slowly and painfully at that too. Seeing baby Aegon in Viserys brings a little life into his eyes. He even mustered up the energy to make a joke about little Viserys having a name fit for a king. Then the crying started, and he had to be left alone again. Aegon and Viserys are easily looked over, despite how important they actually are, because of actor Paddy Considine pulling off the performance of a lifetime. George R. R. Martin had to come out and praise his work this week, saying it wouldn't be justice unless he got an Emmy. Anyone who's read the books knows, Paddy had to create this entire character from little to no source material on the Targaryen King. He might just be the least fleshed out king of the Seven Kingdoms in the entire story. What we got from the lore was that he was a pushover who could never stay mad at Daemon and Rhaenyra, no matter how bad their actions were. Martin's exact words on his blog post was, The character he created for the show is so much more powerful and tragic and fully fleshed than my own version in Fire and Blood that I'm half tempted to go back and rip up those chapters and rewrite the whole history of his reign. Big praise from one of the most celebrated men in literature and television, and very well deserved. People are going to be talking about that throne room scene for a long time, even though the bit about Rhaenyra feeding Cyrax the corpse of Vaemon de Valerion didn't make the cut. Episode 8 and even 7 have been so damn good. Season 1 of Game of Thrones good. And this is just the preliminary stuff that I didn't think the showrunners were going to bother to include. Martin also comments on some of the random accelerated pacing that plagued the middle of the season. He's still fighting for a 13 episode season like he did with Game of Thrones. Aegon and Viserys may be victims of the too much story, not enough airtime problem. Guys like me are here to talk about them, to help you fall in love with these characters a little more. I know they have to get the short end of the stick. If Viserys and Alicent's fourth child is just existing off screen because there wasn't enough time to mention Darren's been living with the High Towers over in Old Town. Nine year old Aegon and his little brother, seven year old Viserys, have been adapted as babies that could very well be twins, like Bela and Reyna were written as. I mean, Lena was aged down for the show, so why can't the same be done for Aegon and Viserys? They look like a three year old and two year old to me. I wonder if casual viewers are thrown off by their names. Naming her firstborn with Daemon Aegon is perceived by Allison to be a slight against her own firstborn son named Aegon. It is a kind of weird thing to do. Allison's son has to be referred to as Aegon the Elder, and Rhaenyra's is called Aegon the Younger. Aegon's a significant name. Targaryens repeatedly name their sons in honor of the first king of the Seven Kingdoms. There's almost one in every generation. Jaceres, Lucerys, and Joffrey Valerion were given out of the norm names for the Targaryen family which kind of seems intentional by George Martin's part, to categorize them as bastards. If people were to reject the sons Rhaenyra had with Harwin Strong, there was still nothing they could say about the legitimacy of these two very Targaryen babies. Just look at them. Aemon won't be picking fights with these nephews for being fakes. Daemon's all excited, digging through dragon layers on the island Dragonstone in hopes of finding some eggs for his new family. We didn't see her in this episode, but Cyrax was responsible for laying these eggs. Rhaenyra's bonded dragon is one of the only dragons mentioned in the story to be a baby maker, takes after Rhaenyra. Two eggs will be placed in Aegon and Viserys' cradle to create that early bond, and the third will be on standby for the yet-to-be-born Targaryen still in Rhaenyra. It will be fun to see the similarities that the special effects team make the hatchlings match Dragon Mommy. I'm surprised Daemon made it in and out of the lair without encountering any dragon whatsoever. It would make sense if Cyrax likes her space and doesn't mind Daemon digging through her stuff. But there are a lot more dragons on Dragonstone, including the three belonging to Jaceres, Lucerys, and Joffrey. Some wild ones too that had never been tamed that would make quick work of Daemon. But anyways, Aegon and Viserys have secured eggs. That's all the show tells us about them. The books on the other hand dive a little deeper into their characterization. Both boys have that striking Targaryen beauty, and Aegon is very visibly the stronger one of the two. Not just because he's two years older, but Viserys was actually born quite frail. Nothing like grandpa leprosy over here, but just your average sickly child. He makes up for it by being the more mature, intelligent one. Viserys was seen as the old king reborn, who's objectively the best king in the story, 
But Viserys is son number five for Rhaenyra, very far down the list for succession. That's if you even consider Rhaenyra the heir to the Iron Throne. You know how men in this primitive fictional world view the prospect of being ordered around by a woman. None of these two boys really take after their parents, personality-wise that is. The environment they're about to step into by the second season of House of the Dragon is what will form who they become. That's as far as I'm comfortable going with a spoiler-free video. For now, they're just two little babies that love each other's company. This is one of the deepest brotherly bonds in the story. I'm talking Jamie and Tyrion close. Wholesome stuff. The original idea of this prequel being five seasons may turn out to only be four seasons. Martin ended his recent blog post on his website from October 11th saying, It is going to take four full seasons of ten episodes each to do justice to the Dance of Dragons, from start to finish. That doesn't leave a lot of time for Aegon and Viserys. I guess I gotta be appreciative for every second they get. 